Hey everybody, welcome back to another news roundup. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. Uh, excuse me if you hear my cat in the background. Um, this is going to be a very light uh, news roundup. Uh, not much news to talk about. A few things here and there uh, we'll get into. But yeah, not much to really talk about. But we have enough for at least a, a, a news roundup for this week. So we're just going to get into it and we'll just dive right on in. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Megapolis, once again. Um, uh, just the endless, uh, the endless uh, story revolving around Megapolis. Um, so Megapolis, of course, uh, due to hit theaters in the next coming weeks, uh, this being September 1st, now when this, movie, this uh, video is released. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just the, it's just waiting for a train wreck to arrive you know, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting, uh, the release of this film, but, um, Francis Ford Coppola had a interview with the, with, uh, Rolling Stones, yeah, and, uh, he was discussing about future plans, uh, after Megapolis, potentially working on two separate projects, the first of which he describes as, quote, a regular sort of film with this wanting to be going about normal uh obtaining of finances and distribution so that's what he means by that is just doing a regular movie versus what he's done with megapolis which is self-funded and all this sort of stuff so and then the second idea that he has actually has a title uh which is distant uh, vision uh which is uh, being described as chronicalizing uh, three generations of an Italian family and would be positioned to utilize money made from Megapolis for this production. So whatever money Megapolis makes, uh, that's the money that Distant Vision will be having to use. So I have very strong doubts that one of these movies will not be made. <laughs> I think you can guess on which one. Um, and I honestly have strong doubts that he will be making another film anytime soon. I mean, he can say that he has ideas, but ultimately, in just the history of Megapolis, like with like the onset accusations and the lack of industry support, and the the really the dead on arrival, you know, that is going to be with the the release of Megapolis. I just sincerely doubt that, you know. I just sincerely doubt that he's going to have any, um, any room to do another project, um, pretty soon. Um, and you know, whatever distant vision is looking to be, I, that is not going to happen if that is his plan on making that film. I mean, his first idea of a regular film may be more plausible and, you know, who knows, maybe in the future he may produce, produce something. But I, I just have doubts. I just have doubts that he'll be met with much support after Megapolis lands in theaters and flops hard. Because, uh, I mean, for one thing, it won't be coming from Lionsgate. <laughs> uh, with all the issues with the marketing, specifically with that one trailer that was released, sincerely doubt that, he's gonna, that they're going to be working with him again. Um... Um, it also doesn't help that recently he 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 made a public statement regarding you know the casting choices for Megapolis, saying that he deliberately looked for canceled actors to star in his films, and to also call the accusations, which are true by the way. I mean, there's literally video proof of that, um, saying that those are just things to damage the release of his movie. Like that's what's important when addressing the allegations. Trust me, this this is going to be dead on arrival. This is going to be just an embarrassment for both the company distributing it and for the director himself. So, you know, it's I this I just think that this is like like the way that he describes the film and ultimately just how he is just like like the ego, you know, all that. Like it's just like it's like his hill to die on, you know, and it's like. I, nobody is really up there with him, you know, 
it just seems like nobody is like even the cast of the film it seems they're rather distancing themselves from the movie itself so um yeah it's just shaping up to be really embarrassing and yeah it's 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 fated to be doomed that's all i can really say so But moving on from that, uh, going from one embarrassment to the next, and to some extent, um, let's address uh, a film that came out this summer. It ends with Us, uh, which was a surprise hit. Um, uh, made a lot. Of, made a, a actually it was a very profitable film. Made like it was a twenty-five million dollar budget and ended up making like something like two hundred million. So big, big success uh, for Sony. Yeah, Sony was the distributor so on it. Um, obviously when it comes to Hollywood, there's always the question of, will we do a sequel? You know, will there be more films of this because of how well it's done? I don't like that that's the optics in Hollywood, but that's just how things are. Um, so the question of if we are getting a sequel to ends, it ends with us is maybe right now. Um, as there is apparently a feud going on between the director and the lead actress, Blake Lively. Um, now, this has been talked about for a couple of weeks, but I didn't want to talk about it because, one, I didn't care for the film, and two, I, I was hearing that it might have been just hit pieces, that you know, wasn't any, any validity to the claims. But now with the film out and... A few weeks in, people have now confirmed, reputable sources have confirmed that this beef is actually real and that there is, um, there's been some stuff that's been coming out about it. And uh, to basically sum it up, um, Blake Lively, who is also a producer on the film, she apparently was manhandling a lot of the creative process. Uh, allegedly, the final cut of the film was hers. That was the one that was released in theaters. The one that you have watched in theaters, that's Blake Lively's cut, not the director's cut. Um, and like I said, she's, she's a producer, so she has some she has some say in the manner. Um, but, you know. But also, apparently, again, allegedly, she got her husband involved in the writing process, Ryan Reynolds being the husband, Um and that causes issues with the WGA because he's not credited, and apparently he was involved in a very critical scene in the film when it came to the writing process. The director was not a, was not knowing of his involvement, which that's a little iffy to me because it's like, how could you not know of that? I mean, I don't know, um, especially if you're filming those scenes. It's like, I don't understand how you don't hear what they're saying and go, oh, wait, that's not my dialogue, you know, but... Um, but, uh, but that's all stuff that came out. And on, on the other side of things, cause there's obviously two sides to this, to a story. There's people that have been saying about the director that there's mistreatment on set. Uh, he might've been, he, he appeared to be visibly stressed and was intentionally alienating cast members such as Blake Lively. Um, and outside of that, this, this is the fact, the more of the facts of the story now, um, the director has publicly stated that he has no interest to direct a sequel, at least no plans at the immediate moment, and he acknowledges that Blake Lively should direct it. Now, when you put all this information, all the information that I just laid out to you about Blake Lively manhandling a lot of the production and her cut being the one in theaters and her cut being the one that's making all that money, you can kind of see where the director would say something like that. It's kind of insinuating, like, you know, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a small dig of sorts or honestly, frankly, just a surrendering of the material. Uh, and it should be noted also that the director has in his production company the cinematic rights to the books while Sony Pictures handles the dis distribution rights. So, um, so, you know, if they want to do a sequel, they have to have his approval Regardless, even if he doesn't want to direct the thing, they have to get his approval on making the movie. So, um, so, so yeah. Um, with all that information laid out, I mean, 
if it is to be all true, um, you know, and it seems like there's sources to back back it up. Um, this seems to be another example of actors believing that they run the show and that they stretch their fame. Because it seems like Blake Lively was just kind of like stretching, you know, her own, you know, her own name. Because the name, I don't know, this Justin Balduni guy, it sounds like he was a new face. Um, and got someone like Blake Lively involved, probably because of notability. Um, and I mean, like, it's just, it's not fair in how she went about it. I mean, I understand that she is a producer and I mean, she does have a say when it comes to the creative process, but the attitudes, the behavior, the disregard of the director, that doesn't make for a healthy relationship or for you know, real solid collaboration. It makes her honestly look like, like a douchebag. It looks, makes her look kind of frankly like a piece of shit. Um, and it's no wonder he's saying, let her direct it because that's probably what it was like working with her. And unfortunately, in my opinion, anyway, that's probably what will end up happening anyway. Sony will probably come in and say, Hey, look, we want to do a sequel. They'll probably ask for the rights. They'll probably just buy it off of him or, just gain his get his approval whatever like that and move forward with a sequel i mean they kind of already have gotten his his approval anyway because of these public quotes out saying that oh yeah let blake direct it you know so i mean to say that there won't be a sequel um i mean i don't i I don't think that's true obviously i mean it look at i mean it's making good money i mean of course they're gonna consider making another one and apparently there's other books so you know, so yeah, they'll they'll probably move forward with it. Um, and with her directing it, it seems very plausible because it's her her cut supposedly that's in theaters and making all that money. So um, it's just to say that it is sad for that director because I can understand his attitude because of what she's bringing on set and him trying to maintain a vision that was already agreed upon with investors, you know, with the authors. And, uh, you know, with other producers, uh, you know, like it's, you know, it's a, it's an agreement that's not just with the director, you know, like there's many, many entities involved and it seemed like Blake Lively was just kind of, um, was just very, uh, just oblivious to that and just wanted to kind of run the show and just kind of insert her own stuff into it, which is okay because like I said, she is a producer but you can't come in and just, you know, you can't just come in and rip, rip things or change things, rewrite shit. And, you know, it's like, you know, you were hired on, you know, to do this and your production company became involved, but ultimately you were hired on, you know, you didn't come in wanting to make the film until this guy, you know, uh, probably sent the script your way or whatever like that, you know, so you know, like, collaboration comes from communication, you know, that's, I mean, it seems like it was a failure in communication, um, I mean, he has some blame in this, I mean, it seems like he didn't really vocalize things, um, but, I mean, regardless, though, she shouldn't have been this controlling, and it just makes her look kind of bitchy, to be honest, and very egotistical, um, and it's just a shame that, the end results of this will only validate that that behavior and not um and not manage it so so it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate and i hope the director you know gets to work on something again in the future and hopefully he doesn't have to run into that uh issue again on his set so so that's my two cents on that Alrighty, uh, let's get into uh, some news regarding the Jurassic Park series. There's a new Jurassic World film on the way, um, Jurassic World 4 precisely, um, and we have a title and some uh, information regarding the film uh, entitled Jurassic World Rebirth, which is okay, um, being helmed by Gareth Edwards who most recently directed The Creator, which I, I liked The Creator. It kind of, 
that's what I would want Hollywood generally mainstream Hollywood to look like is a film like the creator, both narratively and a step visually. I mean, I would, I wish that that's, I just wish that the creator did really well. Cause man, man, I love the attitude of that movie. Um, but it did not do too well. Um, but, uh, also directed established IPs, both in star Wars and in the Godzilla franchise, both directed Rogue One and uh, Godzilla 2014, and he is now at the helm with uh, this film. And according to the press release, uh, this film will take place five years after the will take place five years after the previous film, Jurassic World Dominion, and sees humanity entering some form of extinction, as well as the dinosaurs, as only a few now remain roaming the earth. And there's a miracle drug now, where it may be the key to saving humanity. And a character named Zora Bennett, who will be played by Scarlett Johansson, will be seeking this out with the help of a stranded family, as they'll no doubt come head-to-head with prehistoric creatures, and mayhem will ensue, blah 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 The film will star Scarlett Johansson, Jonathan Bailey, as well as Mahersha Ali, because uh, he's probably waiting on Blade, and will be released on uh, July 2nd, 2025. Um, I thunderously do not care. Um, I've only ever gotten to Fallen Kingdom and found no need to see Dominion, and I see no real reason to see this. As is with Terminator, like if you've watched my last news roundup, how I described Terminator, it's the exact same thing that I give Jurassic Park. This is another franchise that not only ha- shouldn't exist, but has completely exhausted itself. Like, I mean, people still come and see it because I guess they love dinosaurs. I don't know. It gets, it's hard to kind of gauge why people come to see Jurassic Park movies. I, I It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I guess they kind of view it as like schlock in the same way as like Transformers is. Um, so I don't know. Maybe this will fade. Maybe, maybe it'll start to wane with this film. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I just, I could really give a shit. Honestly, it sounds like they're pulling from, uh, uh, planet of the apes, oddly enough, as their inspiration. If you read the narrative, it sort of sounds like planet of the apes, um, at least in that vein of science fiction, um, interesting source to pull from, um, interesting person at the helm, but I'm just not interested. I'm not interested in seeing it. I just, I'm so tired. I honestly have never been big on Jurassic Park. I really not. I know a friend of, or, or someone I know who in, enjoys these movies, but I've just never been crazy about it. Even the first one, I just, I'm not, I've never been crazy on Jurassic Park. Um, never gotten the the appeal. So, yeah. I didn't, I don't, I didn't mind Jurassic World, uh, I don't mind Jurassic Park, and I remember Fallen Kingdom in title, kind of, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's properly titled, um, if you get my, 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 uh, my, 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 uh, my thinking there, um, yeah, I just don't really care. I just, I just don't really care. I'm really just tired out. I'm just, I'm interested to see how it'll do in terms of finance, how profit. I'm wondering if it will start to see a dip because when was the last time we had Jurassic World film? It was like 2022, right? So this is not, not too far, not too long ago, right? It's been, yeah, like what, two years? Let me look it up. Jurassic World, uh, Dominion. When did that come out? Yeah, 2022. So it's only been like three years. So they're making it seem like it's like a re- revitalization of the brand. It's like it's only been three years. So, but, but yeah, really don't care. I just, just am really, just really, really don't care. So, all right, uh, on to the next topic. Uh, this is actually a breaking news story. Uh, I was, not planning on talking about this, but I figured to address it because it's actually <clears throat> pretty noteworthy. Um, California has passed uh, two laws that are going to um, 
that are going to require um, anybody who is wanting to utilize AI, uh, you know, replicas or any deep fakes, anything of that nature, uh, at least if you're operating in the state of California, that is, um, you will be required to provide or to get consent from the estates of either deceased performers or that of living performers. Um, so you cannot just go and use their likeness um, and all that jazz. And um, and uh, the union sag after us, you know, made statements about it, saying that they're very happy about this and that they're, you know, basically, uh, you know, saluting it. And it hasn't gone into effect yet. Uh, Gavin Newsom has yet to sign off on them. But it's pretty much a done deal that these are going to be set in stone things um, when it comes to uh, operating uh, such technology in the future towards video games, film, what have you. You will have to go get the consent of uh, from that estate, from the actor's estate. So. Um, Here's the thing. I mean, there's two two sides to this. I mean, one is obviously the positives, which is that, you know, now there is, it's in law. I, I don't think it needed to be in law to begin with, um, but it's it's now, you know, official now that you cannot just go and use someone's likeness. I know that kind of, like, there's a, there's a gray area that that falls into within, you know, copyright, you know, in that it is not them, you know, entirely, um, but it is using their likeness, you're not using, you're not getting their approval, you're not getting their consent, you know, so, I mean, there is a gray area to this, but ultimately it is that, it is the question of, did you ask this person to, to use their likeness, and most times the answer is no, and, I mean, it should be common sense to get, to get someone's approval if you're going to be using their likeness for anything, especially now with, what this AI tech can do, I mean, you can get into a lot of, you know, crazy ass shit, you know, you, there's a lot of things that, you know, this sort of technology can do, especially on the social media front, with like these kids nowadays, it's like, it can get very, very scary. Um, but at least on the, <clears throat> at least in the film front, um, it will be required now, you know, that the, that whoever is using that technology has to get the approval from those estates whether it's deceased or living, which I absolutely appreciate because I think it is fucking, I, 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 I take great issue with like bringing back dead actors for, um, for projects or using currently deceased performers. Um, you know, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, but I mean, that's just my opinion on the, on the whole, you know, you know, AI subject, but but, you know, fairness is fairness, right? So at least that that is a thing. Now, the negative side about this is that the union, you know, sag after we we talked a lot about in the past, um, especially you know during the actor strike, which is where a lot of these conversations stem from. And if you've watched this channel for any extended period of time, you guys know that I think that the actor strike was really pointless. I, there was really nothing that really came out of it outside of a, a raise. Um, I mean, you can go look back at my videos where I kind of detailed a lot of the ups and downs with the strike, primarily a lot of downs, uh, a lot of people, waste of people's time, if you ask me. Um, but the one thing that I got behind on the strike was about the whole AI conversation. Now, um, it seemed though initially that the idea was that they were against it and it seems that that's still the case but it seems that the, the union has kind of woken up and realized that well we can't abolish it we can't get rid of it you know i mean the industry is going to be the industry so we cannot um we cannot uh you know just eliminate that from the industry because we don't have jurisdiction on that you know producers studios <clears throat> all that stuff, they're going to, you know, integrate it, you know, and utilize it. And we talked about that a few weeks ago where, you know, so I think it was Sony who is like openly stating now that they're just going to be using AI in their films. You know, it's, 
you know, it's it's out of their hands, you know. But they, the original core uh, goal with the strike was to address AI and to find a way to neutralize or to at least, you know, to stop that spread in, within the actors' union. And the the result is to manage it, is to now control that that thing, to control that market, or at least to control entry into that market. Um, which I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure how to feel about that. I mean, I mean, yes, they need, I, I, I'm glad that this, that these laws exist. Um, I mean, I'm glad that they exist, but I feel like it's like, I feel like it's just squarely to the benefit of the union because I don't mean to get a little cynical, but it's like, these laws also just feel really pointless in that it just feels like common sense. You know, you could just, you could just threat or sue and, you know, that content can be removed, you know, if you have that sort of power, you know, like Tom Hanks was like having, I think he was like addressing the, you know, those, those commercials with him, those AI commercials of him. And he was like, please, please don't watch those. I don't endorse you know, whatever they're selling, whatever like that. I mean, if Tom Hanks wants to, he could just sue and he could, or he could just, you know, tell whoever is pr- promoting or creating that ad to just remove it, you know? Like, I don't think that, you know, consent has, is a, is a, is a common sense. You know, it's, it's something in already laid out in, in, I would presume in law and stuff like that. So like these sort of things aren't entirely necessary. I mean, they're, it's good that they exist. Don't get me wrong, but it is only to the benefit to the union in controlling that market to some extent. So, so it's, it's just, it's a weird place to be in their goal in that they were against the AI. They're against, you know, what it means to performers and now they're kind of okay with it now that they control it, you know? Now they're they're like, well, you know, we don't we don't really like it, but now that we have now that we have basically the 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 green card essentially for that market, it's like now we're okay with it. It's like I don't know, you know what I mean? It just kind of feels like they're it just it just kind of illustrates more to me about that union where it's that that union to me is just extremely greedy and they want to control so much i mean especially when you look back on that strike they were wanting to control so much of the, of that conversation and demanding like you know very ridiculous things that they were never ever going to get um so i mean it's a good thing don't get me wrong i'm not trying to say it's a bad thing this is all a good thing we 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 need these sort of things to exist. I think that they already exist, honestly, but um, but it's like, you know, to further those issues, to further, further address those issues, it's good that these sort of, these laws now exist, uh, or at least these state laws exist. Um, and hopefully they expand out to other places, you know? Um, but it's also to be fair and also to be honest in that, these laws are purely a benefit to that union and and purely to them being able to control that market. And I just feel as though that is questionable, you know, at least to me. You know, yes, it's good that they that they, they now have they now have that consent, you know, that requirement for consent, which I, like I said, I always felt that that was always there. I mean, it's not like you, it's not like people can just use your likeness at, at will. I mean, no, I, prior to this, you can tell them, you can threat, you can sue. Like it's, you, you still can do those very things. It's just that now these things exist now. It's like someone created a law out of common sense, you know? It's kind of, it's kind of an kind of a a, a mood mood uh, mood uh, mood point, 
you know, to create these laws and stuff to some extent, because it's like, you can still like, you know what I mean? It just, it just feels like kind of, kind of odd, but it's good. It's still a good thing. I just question who's really benefiting and why do we need these laws to exist? Is it because we truthfully want to create uh, better protections for per- performers? Or is it that we just want to control that market, even though we don't like that market to begin with? You get what I'm saying? So, just an interesting thought, you know. And I mean, like I said, good, but I just question. I just question the purpose. What is really going on in getting these laws made, and what it means for the union ultimately? So. So yeah, good, good, good thing, all around. You know, just with getting those requirements and. Pro- furthering protections towards performers, generally speaking, it's a good thing. But knowing how SAG-AFTRA is, I think there's more to it than just that, if you ask me. So. Alrighty, uh, we have one trailer to discuss for this week. Uh, my little brother will be happy to hear this trailer discussed. Uh, maybe not in my opinion, but uh, let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is on the way, uh, coming out this year, uh, December 20th to be precise, um, and uh, we have the first trailer for the uh, threequel, as some people like to say. Uh, people returning, Ben Schwartz, uh, James Marsden, Jim Carrey, Idris Elba, and to add to the mix, we have Keanu Reeves, who is playing Shadow. Um and uh, Jeff Fowler is back. He directed the first and the second film. And, uh, well, um, it's essentially a bigger version of what came previously in terms of just scale. Like, it's just bigger. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the trailer spells out the story quite frankly, and it's rather unfortunate. Um it's almost like a three-minute long trailer, and it pretty much spells out the movie for you. Um, but as I said, it's just a bigger version of those previous films, and I'm okay with it. I mean, I, I never been crazy about the films; been just rather lukewarm about them. Like they're they're okay. They're they're not offensive. They're not annoying. They get to those points, but never to where I walk out like irritated. It's they're okay. You know, I don't, I don't care, nor do I hate them. They're just okay. Um, I mean, just having a bigger version of that mentality really doesn't mean much to me. If it means, though, the elements are going to be louder, then I'm going to take issue. Big issues with that. But if it's just in scale, I think it'll be whatever. Like, I don't really care, but I'm not really against it either. Uh, I know my brother is very excited for it. Um, and, I mean, I'm, ha- I'm that's, you mean. Know, that may contribute to my opinion. I don't know. Uh, probably not, honestly. But I'm always honest with myself. But um, it's to say, though, I can. Um, it's it's good to see. Um, it's good to see you know a younger demo you know jiving with this you know or jiving with something. It's just good to see my brother happy. It's just what I'm saying. I'm not just. It's happy to see. It's good to see my brother happy. So, um, so. Yeah, I personally am not crazy about it, but I know that people like him are definitely interested. So, uh, so we'll see. The budget is is where I'm concerned because I've that I've I've heard bigger numbers attached to this, maybe getting closer to like 150, maybe. I hope that's not the case because uh, the movies that they just kind of come and go. They're not really mega hits, so. I don't think that this is going to have like really strong legs, especially because I found that this is coming out the same day as Mufasa, The Lion King. So, yeah. So, either they're going to have to delay this, like push up the release date, or they're going to have to buckle up because I just, I, I don't know. But, yeah. Not, like, don't really care, but like I said, not, not, not annoyed by it either. It's just okay. So, 
So, so, so yeah. So those are my thoughts for this week, guys. Uh, very, very short. Just you know, just like I said, a very minimal week. Um, but you guys, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below in regards to the Sonic trailer. Your thoughts on uh, Jurassic World Four coming out. Your thoughts on that whole "It Ends of Us" thing. Um, just curious what you guys' thoughts on thoughts are on that. And of course, with Coppola and with the release of Megapolis, your opinion on how that. If you guys have seen it, because it's you know getting close to release, and there's been already some screenings at festivals and stuff like that. Just I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. Let me know your thoughts on it. And yeah. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.